So without further ado, let, let, let's get into this. There, there's a cardiologist, a human cardiologist, let me clarify, who took his cat to the vet and he was very unhappy with the pricing schedule and the prices and came up with his own scenario about what happens. You can't more than double the bill for doing nothing. What's your thoughts? Okay, so let's uh, let's let's talk about thank that. Thank you for um, sparking my PTSD from this. <laughs> and and, and, and full disclosure, you have actually you've actually contacted Dr. Levine and you've had some conversations uh, over social media with him in my career. Yes, we have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's. So first of all, I, I just want to point out that I think when we're dealing with things like that, I mean to to introduce words like scammers and and you know ripping people off and stuff i think the the biggest thing especially with the not one more vet movement that goes on in the and the high rate of suicide etc in the profession i think it is is just to be kind um you know yeah. and I, i'm gonna go out on a limb here in that just based on 23 years of doing this from human behavior standpoint it, it almost like this is the first time he's actually dealt with a large vet uh bill yeah. for his <laughs> yeah his his cat and and we see this all the time and i i think there's a lot of anger involved there but let, let, let's take a different approach let, let's talk about how human medicine and veterinary medicine are completely different i, I touched on the fact that we're dealing with um a huge expense as running a veterinary hospital alone it's a huge deficit that a veterinary owner um, has to deal with as far as um, producing income the difference i find between a veterinary hospital and a human clinic are significant i, I talk about this a lot and that as as a practice owner you have to have everything that a full-size human hospital has and mm -hmm. and as such there is a underlying cost to that and an underlying, as I always say, that we begin the day in, in the hole and we have to dig ourselves out every day because of all the expenses yes. we have to pay. So I think that yes. that's something we should we should touch upon. And and let's face it, it doesn't matter if you're human or veterinary medicine. This is a business. Our business happens to be providing medical service to um, animals. His business mm -hmm. is, is providing medical service to humans as a car else. But we are businesses and businesses need to be viable. Um, you know, and I, and I think that what what shocks me is is coming from the human world, the discussion about insurance should be there. And um, yeah, you know, so what, what's your take on on th this aspect of that? Can you see me? I can. I'm still looking at his face. Can you fix that? I'll stop the share. There <laughs> okay. we go. Okay, I stopped yeah. the share. <laughs> OK, better. Uh, yeah. You know, it's I only watched the whole thing a couple times it's all i could i all i could take uh but watching it again it's so inflammatory and now you know he's like oh everyone's being a bully to me it's like that was so inflammatory okay that's not what we have to focus on um yes human med and veterinary medicine like yes we are both providing medical care to living breathing mammals but it is it is apples and oranges. People have said that in comments and they're not wrong. It is apples and oranges, which is the point. Him saying, him talking about veterinary medicine from the podium of a, med a human medical professional makes no sense. And it's totally different. And insurance has a lot to do. And human medicine is a huge mess. We, everybody knows that in America, in most places. Uh, nobody really has gotten it really very great. Um, and it's, it's a mess and insurance has a lot to do with the mess. And it's wild what like, when you look at, cause I have posted more about like comparing bills for lab work between human medicine and, and animal medicine. And even Dr. Levine has commented on that. Like you can't, that's, that's before insurance and co-pays and Medicare and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay. So it's just like fake figures I guess then is what he's saying like the, the numbers don't mean anything uh on the human side but they do and and that's I, their I, issue is that yeah, it is I think, all I think we're, we're close to those numbers we in the veterinary profession are close to numbers so like you know what the general populace might not know is less than 10 percent of pets are insured in the United States yeah. and 
you know, yeah. insurance does enable you, especially with this sort of condition. If your pet is recently diagnosed with a thyroid condition, that is a non pre existing condition, and veterinary insurance will cover it. It'll cover yeah. anywhere from 80 to 90% of that. So, um, you know, and pet parents who have insurance always say, do whatever you got to do because I have insurance. And Denmark, they have 80% of the pets are insured. And the happiest pet parents are there, as well as the happiest veterinarians, because we're able to provide the medical service the pet needs, and the pet parents able to do it because of yeah. insurance.